So the props that I have nearby are a blanket, a yoga strap, um, blocks, and uh, a yoga mat. It's probably a wild mistake to bring a cup without a lid in here. The cat likes to come and tip those over. So let's go ahead and find a seat that will be comfortable for you, possibly cross-legged. We might grab anything you have nearby to just have in front of the shins. We'll take a few moments to rock our way in to settle and let the eyes rest. Deep inhale in through the nose. Possibly sighing it out. Checking in with the breath. Checking in with how the body is feeling. It being light a little later, maybe we're feeling a little more energetic or maybe not, maybe we're adjusting our sleep still. We'll take a few moments, bring movement into the fingers. And let's choose an arm, bend that elbow and reach that arm up in the air. Press up through the heel of the hand and then the fingertips. Let the fingers find movement and really sing down. That same side shoulder, invite the shoulder to roll if it feels good for the shoulder. There might be a little bit of movement in the neck. Pause, reverse direction with the shoulder roll. And let's spin that palm to rest, face up. Second elbow bending, second arm rising. Reach up through the heel of the hand first. Then the fingertips, mobilizing fingers. And letting that arm release back down. So same side shoulder as you're ready. Let that shoulder roll, go the other way. You can definitely make the movement smaller if you like. Let's rest with both palms face up, eyes perhaps closed or letting the focus become soft, become fuzzy. Full breathing. We may begin to brush the thumbprints across each of the other fingerprints. And let's expand both arms out to the side. Go for reach. Perhaps for mobilizing fingers, we may find a little nod of the head and pick a direction. Let the head rotate to one side. And then gathering the hands back in, let the hands rest. Full breath, possibly audibly sighing. And let's open those arms back out to the side. Fingers may mobilize, the head may nod, turning the chin in the second direction. Checking in with the neck, with the chest, with the shoulders, the wrists, the forearms. And very slowly, like the air is thick, Gathering the hands back in, let the hands rest. Ah, we may audibly sigh. And perhaps we're starting to draw shapes with the tip of our nose. It might just be a sway. It might be a circle. We are not trying to make ourselves dizzy. We can make the movement smaller we can make the movement larger. Let's pause, chin tipping to one side of the chest. We might prefer stillness, we might find a little nod. And then note which side that was in reverse direction with your drawings, if you are drawing. And then let the chin land on the second side and we may just find stillness, we might find a little nod. Ah, the body may audibly sigh. Let's bring the nose back towards center, hands perhaps on props. And we might tip lean a little to one side and then the other as we check in with a forward fold. Try to keep your butt cheeks connected to whatever it is you're sitting on so we're not tipping so hard to one side that we're popping up. Now we might continue with a little glide, side, slowly to side. We might find a spot 
more or less centered in the middle where we land breathing, letting the breath massage back ribs, the muscles of the side ribs. Maybe we walk our elbows further forward. We could use props other than our hands, but we might use our hands to rest the brow on, closing the eyes. Ah, we may be audibly sighing, arriving in the body. We may use the thumbs to squeegee any tension out of the brow, out of the temples. And let's slowly rise up, take your time. Let those hands slide in, let the hands move out wide to the side. And whichever leg you happen to have on top or in front, reach that leg out. Now the other leg, it might be tucked underneath, so we might be most comfortable putting that foot on the ground. We might even start to draw back on the toes of the extended leg. We might add in a little hint of a forward bend. If that's more tension than we want just yet, feel free to back it off. So we want to stay on the calm side of things. We're not dialing it up to 10 right away. So we might find a spot where we tip in and it's tolerable. We might add a tiny head nod because often that tension goes right up the back, right up into the neck. We might be feeling it most prominently, perhaps down the leg, especially if we're continuing to draw the toes back. And let's slide back up. So we'll fold that foot in, placing the second foot in front or on top. And if you need to make any little shifts, any adjustments for the second side, please go ahead and do so. So we'll wiggle back, spinning palms forward, and the arms may rise, the gaze may rise. Think about sliding the elbows down towards a cactus or a goal post position. And then press the hands, the palms down. Now, as we do, the tendency is for one elbow, maybe both elbows to drop. So we might have to kind of shift our gaze side to side a little bit and invite those elbows to be as high as the shoulders. Let the fingertips start to rise. We're moving the backs of the hands back. So it may feel like the shoulder blades are moving closer together. It might just feel like we have a big stretch across the front of the chest reaching fingertips high. Slide one hand behind the other. But get a little sense, right hand, left hand. So we'll switch eventually, not yet, but eventually. So just notice. And just like a strong wind is shifting you side to side, not wildly. Just a little shift side to side. And perhaps we bend the elbows and let the hands slide behind the back of the head. Now we're very gently pressing the back of the head back into the hands. You can back it off. We might find micro nods. Maybe we need to hug the elbows in a little. What feels best in your body? Let those arms rise. Bring the elbows back down to cactus. Palms face down, trying to keep those elbows as high as the shoulders. So shoulders might be feeling some heat about now. So do take a rest when needed. Fingertips point high. Bring those arms overhead and slide the second hand behind now. So pressing back. Maybe there's a little sway. You can make it a very subtle sway. It does not even have to be as much as I'm moving. I'm moving a little more just to show you the direction of movement, that possible side to side movement. We might be bending the elbows, let the hands come behind the back. And we may be pressing the head back into the hand, gently tractioning the neck, shoulders moving back up over hips, slide the hands apart, find that elbow bend. And this time let's bring the elbows closer towards one another. And then gather the hands in. Ooh, relief, let the hands rest, let the eyes rest. Full breath and body, perhaps nodding the head, 
likely we are fully aware of sensations in the shoulders and the chest. And if you'd like to roll out the shoulders, if that would feel good, give them a little roll. Brush the thumbprints across the other fingerprints. We may find our blocks or just take the hands behind the back so we can lean back and let's start to extend that top leg. But before we do, let's bring it back in. So bring that leg back in. Let's bring our props forward and let's go for the forward bend on this side. So we'll balance it out. So we might find a little shift, right to left, side to side. We may find stillness sinking in. We may be supporting the brow on the thumbs. And then let's take our time to rise back up. Reach that top leg, front leg out, and maybe place the other foot on the ground so the knee is pointing up. Draw the straight leg, toes back, or straightish leg. Now we can take it back. We can stay back. We do not have to move forward. We might play with the idea of tipping in. Can we draw back on the little toe side of the foot more? Or maybe we back it off and revisit tipping in. We don't have to get there right away. We may find a spot where we hold at whatever depth feels right in your body. So let's rise back up, extend both legs, give a little wiggle into the knees, circle the ankles around, go the other way. Let's slide the feet in, cross the ankles, rolling up to a standing forward fold. So step the feet as wide as you like, let the hands be as high or low as you like. Can you let the head be really heavy? So if we're in a deeper forward bend, the crown of the head points down towards the ground, letting go of tension in the neck, perhaps nodding the head, fan the toes. We might play with shifting our weight back into the heels, lifting, fanning the toes, and then rocking forward. So feeling that weight shift forward, we might get very light in the heels. We might even Lift the heels just a tiny, tiny bit, just enough to slide a sheet of paper underneath them. Rocking back, the toes may rise and fan. Rocking forward and then find a spot in the middle. Let the hips glide to one side. Now you might bend into the knee, the side that you are gliding to, perhaps let that knee bend. Slowly extend that leg as we find center. We'll start to bend the other knee as we glide the hips to the second side. So this is not a huge deep bend, just a little shift side to side. And then gradually we'll find our way back to center. If the feet are a little wider than hips distance, navigate them in. Wrap the belly muscles in. The arms may sway X crossing as we find our way up to stand. Now we might be lightheaded. Give yourself a moment to breathe, especially if you came up quickly, that tends to exacerbate the snow globe in the head effect. Fan the toes, palms bend to face forward. Look for a little weight shift side to side as we stand. What are the toes doing? Are they digging into the ground? Can we find spacious toes? Inhale, the gaze and arms may rise. As we exhale, bend the knees as much as you like. Let the hands come down to the floor or maybe hands come down to the blocks. Watch out for things on your mat. And let's take a walk. Let's walk it back into a down face dog. So we may elevate, let's say the left heel, but whatever side you start, it's fine. That left knee might be turning, pivoting towards the right, and we might give a little rock, a little wobble of that left knee. The right heel trying to reach down towards the ground. The chin may turn a little towards the right. Trading side, so left heel down, right heel rising, right knee pivoting left. 
we might find a, just a tiny shape, a tiny wobble of that right leg. Chin may angle a little more to the left. And then we may just pedal back and forth, side to side. Let's bring ourselves down to the knees. And if we know the floor is a little hard for the knees, go ahead and give yourself a pat. No point in pausing discomfort. Let's reach the right foot back. Pitch back through that right heel. As we push back through the heel, instead of going sway back, which I'm exaggerating, go ahead and round the back. Let the chin move in towards the chest. You might even find a little nod of the head. And then push that heel forward. Think about swinging the left foot, the bent knee foot off to the left and letting that right heel pivot to the left. So take your time with this, really make a meal out of it. Notice what it feels like in that right hip. And maybe it's too soon for a longer hold. Maybe we move back to center and then roll the heel, the right heel over to the right. So that right hip is moving down towards the ground. So we'll move the heel back up, swing that left foot to the left. We may be arcing right ribs up towards the ceiling. Pivot, right heel up, right heel moves to the right, rolling that right hip low. Let's come back to center. And now this time we may hold a little longer. Make sure that left knee is sufficiently padded. You might choose to bring that right hand on the right hip. We might raise right arm up in the air. Chin goes to wherever it makes your neck happiest. So perhaps we circle that top wrist, go the other way, and then cycle that top arm forward. Let the hand return to the ground. We'll release the right knee to the ground, sitting back for a child's pose. So you could choose to have the knees close together. You could choose to widen the knees. We might grab a block and support the forehead. You might have your forehead on the ground. I'm going to stay on the block because I think I'm less muffled that way. We might be, actually I said that and I'm going to draw for a moment to demonstrate this variation. You might be extending the arms straight out. But you can always keep bend in elbows. As you feel ready, let's begin to rise back up. I'm gonna pivot around for the other side. You don't have to, you are welcome to stay as you are. So we'll send the left foot back, pitching out through the heel, creating a little rounding in the back, chin towards chest, maybe a little nod of the head. Find fullness of breath. And pushing that heel over the toes. Start to swing the right foot out to the right, left heel moving towards that long right edge of the mat. And again, we don't have to linger here at all. It might be a little soon. Swinging right foot back in, let that left heel roll left. The hip may be rolling lower, closer to the ground. We'll move back up. And we'll roll the heel back to the left. And if you just feel like it's better for you for now to keep moving, feel free to keep moving. Make sure that right knee is sufficiently padded. Maybe we're dropping weight into that right hand even more. Elevating left hand, left arm may rise. We may mobilize fingers, we may twirl the wrist. Perhaps we're sweeping that top arm overhead, arcing. We might lean back, sweep that left thumb back, then gradually, slowly, slowly let that hand come down to the ground, swing the right foot and land the left knee, and let's sit on back. So we might kneel for a moment and we may encircle right wrist, give that right wrist a little self-massage, maybe even some traction. You might work up into the forearm. 
Try both sides. And let's weave the fingers together. Press the hands down. If you have lotion on, the hands tend to slip apart. So if you recently reapply, that might happen. We'll cycle the hands up, move the hands forward. In, rotate to your right, press out through the hands. Move through the middle, try the left, and then we might just smooth it out into a circle. And go the other way. And then let's bring the hands back to the heart, raise the arms up and overhead, and perhaps a little shift side to side with the heels of the hand, with the crown of the head, wiggling up through the shoulders. Let the arms release down. Slide one elbow on top of the other. Does not matter which, we'll do both. So you might be creeping those fingers in closer and closer to the shoulder blades. We might even use the fingers on the shoulders, shoulder blades for a little self-massage. We may round down. We may roll it up, unfurl and reverse the cross of the elbows. Perhaps rounding down, rise up. Release the hands, hands to hips, elbows back, shoulders back, maybe weave the fingers together behind the back. Maybe extend the arms. Releasing and consider lifting hips up and over knees. Hands back on the hips, weight shift to the left. Hike that right hip up. Maybe it helps to put the hands out on imaginary walls, maybe real walls. Start to hover, lift that right foot. Now we might play a little hot potato. We might tap the toes down, lift the foot up, take your time, Ooh, eventually land the foot. But again, we're making a meal out of it. So we might have to inchworm those toes a little further forward. We might sink in, watch that back knee. And you're only going down to the place that feels right for you. Every body is different, and we want to be able to rise back up out of it comfortably. Maybe we're scooching those toes a little further forward so that your heel, that right heel, can stay on the ground when you sink forward. And let's be able to rise back up out of it. So let's hold a more of a 90-90, instead of that deep lunge, and we'll lean back a little bit. So we're inviting more tension, more stretch sensation in the front of that left leg, left hip, bend the right toes. We may keep the hands on that right thigh like we're leaning away from it. Some of us may not need to lean back all that far to find all that sensation. We may take the left arm, that outside leg arm up. Maybe the right arm joins it. We might grab hold of that left wrist, go for a little more lift, a little more length. And then let the hands come back down. Shift the bottom back. Tap, navigate that right foot in until maybe we peel the foot up and play with that balance. So it's going to wobble. Let the wobbles happen. Recover, find center, explore. We might find a little movement. Slowly, eventually, we're bringing that leg back, Whew, letting the chin land. Sitting back, and you can always grab a block to sit on, a cushion. It doesn't just have to be the heels. So give yourself a moment. If you're drinking water, now might be a good time to take a sip. And we'll begin to rise up. So as we come up for that second side, maybe we're just playing with that weight shift side to side, getting ready. And then we're hiking, we're shortening the distance between that left hip, the armpit. Maybe we have a toe down, playing hot potato with the toes. That leg is moving out to the side. Definitely breathing. <laughs> and maybe we play with it a little more on purpose. If it got easy, make it a little more challenging. Spend a little more time there. Move the foot forward, move the leg in and out. Eventually, landing. If your foot came down really quickly, you can always pick it back up and play with it a little more. So give yourself a moment, make sure that back knee has enough padding. 
How's the positioning of the left foot? Do we need to scooch the foot a little further forward if we're choosing to sink forward? And it might just be a little bit. Moving it back. We might go a little further forward, maybe not. But we definitely want to be able to rise up and out of it. So it doesn't have to be super low. Maybe we're adjusting that front foot. Maybe we're adjusting the foot backwards. You might repeat that deeper lunge and rise back up. We may be placing the hands on that front thigh, tipping back, leaning back. We have that right hip, right thigh moving forward. Maybe the right arm's rising. Maybe we're flipping the palm out, grab the wrist, go for a little more length. We might be kind of moving into more of a posterior tip with the pelvis. So that's shifting the pelvis forward. And that will likely turn up the stretch in the front of that right leg. Cool, slowly release the arms. Maybe you're going to keep the arms wide. Hands might be on the hips. We might back the toes up, peel the heel up, start to play hot potato with the toe tip. And we might bring the leg in and out and play with it for a little while. Eventually, eventually, navigating that leg back. Ooh. Try to let the knee come down with control. Sometimes it comes down like that in a kerfunk. And we're sitting back, maybe on a block. Sitting with the breath. And let's slide the hands forward. We've got a lot of props on the mat. We might just take a moment to slide them off. Elevating the hips, moving back into down face dog. Let's wiggle the feet far enough back that you're comfortable rocking forward into high plank. We might be muckling fingerprints to the ground. You can put the knees down at any point and gradually descend to the belly. Let's glide the hands back, let the heart rise. Cobra, releasing down as you're ready and repeating as you're ready, heart rising and releasing. Perhaps one more round. Pressing hips back towards heels, tucking toes, lifting hips, down face dog, slide the left foot closer to the right. Let that right leg rise. Left heel may drop, right knee may bend. Right foot may move over towards the left, perhaps we're twirling the ankle. And drawing that right knee in towards the chest. Let the left heel rise, stepping right foot forward between the hands. Back knee, you're welcome to put it down. The hands may walk up that front thigh. The hands may find the hips. The arms, the gaze may rise. Perhaps we find a steeple grip. Perhaps we bring hands open behind the head, cradle the head. Let's rise up, pivot that left foot out, heel toe, adjust that left foot, maybe scooch right toes forward. And let's drop down into a warrior two variation. So just take a moment, rise up, check in with the knee, check in with the hip crease. And when you feel ready, we'll drop back down into warrior two. Chin gaze moving over towards the right. Let's inhale, rise back up. And exhale, sinking down. Windmill top arm alongside the ear, plant the hands. Roll the left heel up. Draw the right knee and step it back, down face dog. Shifting out anything that needs it. And at your own timing, slide the right foot in closer to the left. That left leg may rise. The right heel may rise, the right heel may release. That top knee may bend. The foot, left foot may go to the right, the ankle may roll. Drawing the left knee in towards the chest. Navigating left foot forward between the hands. So there is no hurry, put that back knee down if you like, cushion the back knee if you like, let the hands walk up the thigh, hands can stay low. 
front toes fanning, the arms may rise, hands may come together. We might support behind the head, going for a little more back bend, lunging into that front knee. We may reach the arms up, we may straighten that front leg, hit at the back toes to face a long edge of the mat. We might be dropping the arms, we might extend the legs and adjust the feet as needed, sinking back into that left knee bend, arms open out to a T, chin moving out over bent knee side. Let's take that back arm, windmill it up and overhead. Let the hands land, peel that back heel up, navigating that second foot, left foot back, shifting it out, down, face up. So let's elevate the heels and release down on the knees. So we always have options, right? You can come back to that very first option you did a while ago where you swing your left foot to the left and reach that right leg out, right hand may find the hip. Now we might, Instead, from down dog, step your right foot two thirds of the way up the mat, pivot all the toes towards the right long edge of the mat, maybe wiggle the back foot a little further back, weight in left hand, right hand, right hip, right arm rising, right arm overhead. Now for fun, we might start to lower that long leg hip, that left hip towards the ground. We're letting the left shoulder passively move up towards left ear. You could keep the right hand in the air, it could rest on the leg. Breathing into side ribs. We might be reaching right fingers back towards left foot, palm face up. We may press down into the little toe side of left foot, let the hips rise, sweep that top arm up and over, plant the hands, step it back, down face dog. So we might shorten our dog stance and go wide. Get a, quite a wide stance with the feet. Drop the weight into the right hand and muckle the fingerprints to the floor. Left hand crosses under the belly and we're reaching for the outer right leg. The thigh, the calf, the ankle, the heel. We're turning, we're twisting over to the right. Let's release, left hand back down to the ground. So for our second side, let's do the same variation. Maybe you're going to drop down to hands and knees first. And swing right foot out to the right and send that left leg long. Left arm rising, left arm sweeping overhead. Maybe from dog, we're stepping that left foot two thirds of the way up the mat and pivoting all the toes to the left. We may stay up, we may raise the left arm, take it overhead, we may sink that outer right thigh, right hip down to the ground, top hand lands where it will. Breathing into side ribs. We do not have to go anywhere else. We might reach the fingertips back towards right foot, long leg foot. Pressing into bent knee foot, hips rise, top arm moving up and overhead as a possibility. Let that hand come down, step it back, down face dog, short dog, squat dog, feet wide, weight in left hand, right hand sliding down that outer left leg, drawing that right shoulder up and on the diagonal to the upper right corner of the mat. Release the hand and take the hand, heel, rising walk to bring the hands back to the feet. And perhaps you encircle the big toes or perhaps you spin the palms to face up and stand on the palms. Ah, the body may audibly sigh. We may flip the hands over and stand on the tops of the hands. Maybe hinging at the elbows Wrapping the elbows in towards one another, let the neck get longer. And let's tempt those fingers forward. Pivot the feet out to a V and peel the heels up. 
moving down into a squat. So for a lot of us, the heels are going to be elevated and they'll probably always be that way. You might grab a blanket or your mat or separate towels and wedge, put that wedge underneath the heels. Those of us that have that genetic reach to the floor, maybe the heels are down. Maybe you grab a block and sit on the block. Palms together in front of the heart. Let's consider shifting forward and letting those heels rise if they're down. Start to rise up until the heels can touch down and then just find a pause point. So that point where ooh, the thighs are heating up, they're getting warmer. Maybe we can stay a little longer. Maybe we need to rise out of it. The knees should not be complaining. Come up a little higher, go a little lower, whatever you need to do to find the sweet spot with the knee bend. Ooh, but when the leg timer truly goes off, ha, extend the legs, shift it out. Let's do a little counter stretch. Use a wall if you'd like. Step the right foot back, float the foot, grab the foot, point the knee down to the ground. One or both hands may hold the foot, shoulders rolling back. We may take that knee forward, give that knee a boost to the chest, Invite the knee out to the side. It may help to extend the left arm out to the left for balance. Let's bring that leg forward. Extend, release, shift it out. Second side. Find a spot maybe where the floor feels more even, more even than others. Maybe your floor is more even than mine. Take the toes back. Maybe we're bending the knee and folding the foot. We might be grabbing the foot, fanning the toes, and we can stick with this. We can always keep that right hand on a wall or even a pretend wall can help with the balance. Let's bring that knee forward, bring that knee out to the side, bring the knee forward, extend, rebend, release, shifting it out. So let's step the feet out, wide stance. Big toes turn in just a little bit, draw up on the thighs, lift the heart. Exhale, tipping and leaning in the knees as much as we need to so that we don't feel strain, pull in the thighs. Hands may walk back. Maybe the wrists and forearms really appreciate feeling the heels of the hands off the ground. Some of us might prefer to bring elbows or forearms onto props or maybe all the way down to the ground, fan the toes. And you find more ease through the jaw, more ease through the neck. Let's begin to walk the hands forward. So hands moving under the shoulders. This might be a nice place to grab a block. It might be a nice place to place the left hand on the block, bend the right knee a little, maybe even turn the right toes out, slide right hand to right hip. I'm mirroring. We might fully extend the leg, toes forward. We may raise that right arm. Check in with neck. We may bend both knees, start to thread the right arm under the belly. So the left hand may need to pivot around. So this is kind of like an even wider legged dog. We might be sliding that right hand down the left outer leg. We may be bringing that right elbow to the ground. The left hand could be on a prop, it could be on the floor. Release the left leg if you have it. We'll come halfway up. Maybe we're finding the block for both hands for a moment. Ah, let the body sigh. 
When you feel ready, second side. We might get into the second side by turning left toes a little more left, by bending left knee, raising left hand to the hip, and then maybe we re-extend left leg, pivot left toes in, and raise left arm. The gaze might be the last thing to rise. And we may thread that top arm, that left arm under the belly. We might bend the knees a lot as we head here. So we might be bringing the hand outside the right leg, slide the hand down the leg, and then maybe we extend the leg. We might put the elbow on the floor. Maybe it feels even better to float the elbow on this side and just draw that left shoulder up on the diagonal over to the left away from that right hip, or maybe it feels even better to draw in closer with elbow on the ground. And let's gradually unwind. So we may be bringing our hands back onto the blocks or block. Heel, toe, heel, toe, feet in. So let's think about how we might come down to the ground from here. Maybe we're just gonna bend the knees and land. So whatever feels best in your body, what works for you. Mer person style, let's lift and slide the hips to one side so that we can navigate the feet forward. Feel free to have feet up against a wall. So we might, if not on a wall, just look for active feet. Imagine the feet are on a wall. Fan the toes open wide. And we'll go quite as wide for most of us as our fingers do. Wobble rock, sits bones back. Ooh, wrap the little toe sides of the feet up towards those outer hips. Check in with that tension in the back of the legs. If we need less, maybe we walk the hands further back. We may keep the hands alongside the hips. If we need more, we might tip in. Keep wrapping little toe sides of the feet back up. Find breath in belly so we're not so compressed in front body we can't breathe. And let's gradually slide the hands back up. Give the toes a little wiggle. Make sure you've got room behind yourself. If not, just scoot the hips forward so that you do. Fingers point back to the side. If available, fingers point at the hips. Bend the knees so that the ankles line up under the knees. Roll the shoulders back. You can keep your bottom down. We might lift up. So we may be rising up. Chin could stay to the chest if that feels better for the neck. Let yourself come back down. Weight in the right foot. Let that left foot rise. So we may keep the up foot, the left foot off the ground, press down into the right foot, left leg high. Release down and we may keep that left leg hovering. Rock the knees to the right. So you might need to pivot the back hand around. So just check in. Maybe we just put that knee down. That's fine, if so. Maybe we're hovering the leg. Maybe we're extending the leg. Come back to center. We might rock back around, press down, rise up, and release. I'm going to pivot around for the other side. Don't feel like you have to do that. So second leg. Right foot off the ground, toes may be drawing back. So we'll press down into the left foot, rising. Maybe it's fun just to swing back and play with that lift and rise. Maybe we're going to roll over to the left, mindful of that left wrist. And again, we might just put that top knee down. Maybe we keep that leg elevated. Maybe we extend the leg. We bend, we might keep that leg hovering, move back to center, rise back up and release. So let's just find a seat and check in with the wrist. So this might be 
a good time again to bring a little self-care to those wrists. <clears throat> and we may be extending left leg, draw the right knee up and in, send the left butt cheek back and wide. Drawing left toes back, rotating, twisting towards the right. Now, if you have a yoga strap or maybe a dog leash, um, go ahead and grab that. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Just stay with that twist to the right. So we're all doing a twist. So if you have a dog leash, use the handle. If you have a strap, you are making a handle and you're putting a handle around the ball mount of the foot. This does work best with a long strap. So that length can vary based on your height. This happens to be, I think, an eight foot strap. Uh, you wanna take the strap up and overhead, hold it in your right hand. So you're letting go of the left hand, left hand moves towards right knee. Strap is moving overhead and behind the head as we draw it back. slowly, slowly unwind. So we'll move back to center. Give yourself a moment, especially if you went with the strap twist. It tends to feel pretty deep. Let's navigate left leg in and right leg long when you're ready. So we may tip in, send that right cheek, right sits bone back. Make our way back up to center, drawing right toes back, little twists to the left, finding breath. If we're using the strap, it might be a lot of twist to the left. So we might be putting that loop, that handle around the foot. So you can start with both hands on the strap. Watch out for any buckles or metal on the ends of your straps. But eventually it'll just be left hand going high behind the head, right hand maybe to the inside of the knee, Maybe it's coming all the way around to the other knee, but how does that feel? We're a little sensitive. You can always back it off. So more is not necessarily more. Listen to your body. And then let's slowly, slowly Come back in, unwinding, de-looping the foot if you have the strap around it. Gather that leg and sitting with the breath. And we may rest the eyes and we may be noticing a different quality, maybe a different quality of breath, a different quality of the nervous system. And let's take a few moments to make our way onto the back body, but have a couple of blocks within easy reach. So we'll come down onto the back with the head center. So it can be tempting to look at the screen to see what's going on. But if you feel like you want to watch first, maybe sit up so that you're not up in the air and turning your head to one side. Your neck may not appreciate that. So we might find the elbows in that cactus arm or bull post arm position. We may step the heels in a little closer to the glutes and this is where we're not turning our head, nose tip up. Fan the toes, start to curl the bottom off the ground. So as the hips rise, we're just finding a pause hover point. We're not necessarily thrusting upwards as high as we can possibly go. The back of the head may very gently, just a hint of drawing or sliding towards the shoulders so that there is a space between the neck and the ground. And then very slowly lower down the upper back. So we're 
lengthening the back as we unfurl and come back down to the ground. Let's navigate the elbows in, so elbows might be touching or very close to touching the ribs. Palms face in this time. We're hugging the shoulders down to the ground. So those of us that are super, super mobile in the shoulders, don't overdo it. But a lot of us are tighter in the chest and have to do a little more work to keep those shoulders down. Fan the toes. Start to curl the hips up. Feel those inner thighs active. Hips are rising. We're reaching forward with the knees. Breathing. We may release the fingertips towards the heels. Then gradually, slowly, slowly, rolling back down. Feel like your heels have gotten a lot closer to your glutes. Maybe we just release that a little bit. Scooch the toes forward. Heel toe, heel toe, soles of the feet together. Let the knees drop out, right knee to the right, left knee to the left. Notice how this feels in the inner thighs, the front of the hips. Let's press down into bent elbows again. Press into the little toe sides of the feet and let the hips rise. So we might have a little wobble side to side. Maybe we hold steady at center. And then gradually releasing down. It may feel like the knees drop a little closer to the ground after that. Breathing into the front of the hips into the inner thighs. You could always slide those blocks. Maybe you have those blocks nearby because it's feeling too intense. Slide a block underneath each thigh or underneath each knee. The intensity sometimes builds, right? So you've been there for a few breath cycles. Maybe it's time to slide the blocks into place, or maybe it's just getting good. Consider staying a little while longer. We might be very gradually lifting the knees back towards the ceiling, toes fanning, heel toe, the feet wide. So we're holding in the other direction now. So heels turning out, knees tipping in, knees supporting one another. If the knees don't comfortably touch, this might be another place where we use the block or a cushion to put it between the knees. Let the body sigh. You're welcome to stay a while longer. We may be heel toeing, soles of the feet back together. We may step the feet in, grab a block, 
hover the hips and slide the block on its lowest setting under the hips. If you don't have a block, maybe use a chair. You can keep your knees bent and lift your lower legs onto the chair. If we're using a block, we'll bend the knees, knees into the chest. We might dust off the feet just in case we have any floor debris, any mat particles clinging to the feet. Let the toes rise. Maybe we use the block as a massage tool, drawing figure eights. And we may find a spot where we can rest for the next 10 to 15 full breath cycles. So one inhale, one exhale is a breath cycle. After that final breath cycle, letting the knees rebend, placing first one foot to the floor, pause, bring second foot back to the ground, fan the toes, releasing, breathing, let the hips settle, let the belly unwind. Let all of the sensations through the feet, through the legs, let them settle. And perhaps we take the hands to the block and step the feet in. We may hover the hips and sway the hips to the left, put them down. We may rock the knees into the chest for a supine twist, knees to the right. Right hand may rest on left leg, just a possibility. If that feels like more twist than you want, you could put a wedge under the legs. We might extend the arms, we may bend the elbows. We may encircle that left wrist and press that left elbow away as we draw left wrist to the right. Breathing into back and side ribs. Bringing the feet back to center, lift, sway the hips to the right, put them down, rock the knees into the chest, knees to the left. Maybe we're switching the wrist grip if we went for that variation on the other side. Full breath. Breathing into right side and back body. Taking your time to navigate legs to center. Sway the hips to center. Knees may tip in, feet may stay wide. Mindful of props, water bottles, we might slide the legs long. We might give the legs a rock. Letting the legs rest. Letting the arms, the hands rest in any position 
that feels restful and instinctive to you for these next few moments. Know that you are welcome to stay here a while longer if you like. We may bring movement into toes, to fingers, circling wrists. We may reach up through the arms, down through the legs, and exhale, releasing. We may slide each foot in, rocking to rest on one side. Curling up in a ball. We may be supporting ourselves back to a seat. Perhaps rubbing the hands together, placing a hand over the belly, a hand over the heart. Eyes at rest. Sealing our practice with sound. Deep inhale through the nose. Um. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this practice. Please let me know if you have any questions.